And another thing that a lot of people say is, but the church has problems. I don't like the people that go to church. They've hurt me all the more as the day draws near. You're going to need the church in these end times to stay on track, to stay on course, and to make your aim straight. If we as the church were to step up, we would see all of these things come to pass. Don't tell me that it can't happen. There have been times in my life where I feel so much anxiety going to church. I feel like I can't sit still and it makes me very self-conscious. I know COVID hit and a lot of us stopped going to church. Get back into it. Let's not say, oh, if I have time, then I'll show up. Make time. There's never a right time to, to do anything, to start a business. You have to make time. You have to force it. The devil does not wait to attack our kids. So we should not wait to teach them to resist and to flee from him, to fight the devil. You need every little part and it's the same with the church. You are not insignificant and you are needed there. Don't think of these people as like, oh, they're, they're so much greater than me. Like, how can I be here with them? No, they're all struggling. They're all going through things that you don't see, just like you're going through things that they don't see. This is the bride of God. Let's take it seriously. Let's not Let's say, go to oh, Hebrews if I had chapter time. 10, verse 25 together. It says, not giving up, meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The day, day is capitalized, the D, and that is speaking of the rapture. You're going to see that as we get closer to the end, because we are in the end of the end times, you're going to need church more and more. Church is not a building, it's the people in it. It was designed to be a family, a place where we stir each other up. It's a place where we correct each other. It's a place where we pray for each other. This is all of our callings, to, to walk in perseverance through the tribulations and through the hard times. And the devil loves isolation. Don't let him isolate you in your living room to watch it on live. Don't let anxiety tell you that you can't sit in that room. Start with little steps. There have been times in my life where I feel so much anxiety going to church. I feel like I can't sit still and it makes me very self-conscious. The people that you think are staring at you, they're, not, they're so focused on themselves. Everybody's so focused on themselves. And even if they are staring at you, let them. Let them be bold, be courageous. God has not let me down. I remember times in the church where I would just be like, Jesus, 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 because I felt like I couldn't keep still. Like my head couldn't keep still. And this is me being very raw with you guys. And it embarrassed me. One time I felt so uncomfortable in the church that I ran to a room because it was a big church. It was like the kitchen of the church. And I just cried out to God. I was like, God, I can't even sit in the back. I don't even feel comfortable sitting in the back to the point where I ran to this kitchen so that I could just hear the preaching because the preaching was playing on the speakers in the kitchen. I was like, will it be like this forever, God? And I remember a young boy came in to do his homework into the kitchen with me and he was probably like 12, 10, maybe nine. He constantly ticked, like he would um, be talking and he would just like shake out of nowhere and it happened consistently. But he was such a happy kid and he acted like he, like it didn't bother him. And I thought to myself, how selfish, how selfish of me. There are some people who have Tourette's, who have such serious diseases, and they figure out a way to go through life. They figure out a way to be confident. So don't let anxiety or the things of this world, I know COVID hit and a lot of us stopped going to church, get back into it. Get back into it, beloved. Let's not say, 
oh, if I have time, then I'll show up, make time. There's a saying that says there's never a right time to, to do anything, to start a business. To, you have to make time, you have to force it. Let's create the kingdom of God together. Don't neglect it. Get into the habit. Teach your kids to get into the habit. If you're watching it at home on live, where are your kids? Your kids need to be fed the word of God too. Take them to children's church. The devil does not wait to attack our kids. So we should not wait to teach them to resist and to flee from him, to fight the devil. I wrote something down so powerful that my pastor said, and it says, you need to make the time for church because if you're not in proximity, which means in nearness or in the space or in the time or in the relationship, you can't produce the function of the church, which means that you can't operate in the way that God has designed and ordained. You can't fulfill its natural purpose. You can't do what was intended for yourself or for your family or for things around you so again don't neglect it because if you're not in proximity or nearness you can't produce the function of the church one way that i can explain this is that we all have functions when you think about a toy with many pieces or the motor of a car if something in that motor is missing something as simple as a screw you might be the screw in the motor you might be something that you feel is very insignificant in the body of god but we all know that if that motor loses a piece it will not operate correctly same thing with our body if you've ever hurt yourself you've ever broke a toe like a pinky toe something that you wouldn't think has a lot of significance and you're looking at people who are on the worship team who are doing big things in the church and you're thinking wow I'm the same as everybody else, or I have no importance here. When you even just break your nail, when your nail falls off of your pinky finger or your pinky toe, you realize how important it is. You realize that its function is so necessary for you to operate the way that God designed, like it says right here, to produce the function of the church. The way that it was supposed to work, you need every little part, and it's the same with the church. You are not insignificant and you are needed there. You can't use your spiritual gifts or receive others staying at home, not going to church, watching it online. It happens in the foyer. It happens in the lobby at church. Miracles happen at the altar of church. I, for one, I love to go to the altar and pray. There's just something about sitting down or getting on your knees and being in that presence of God. It happens in prayer with your friends, with random people. Like, church is that one place that everybody is there to serve God. Don't think of these people as like, oh, they're, they're so much greater than me. Like, how can I be here with them? No, they're all struggling. They're all going through things that you don't see, just like you're going through things that they don't see. So that's the one place that you can go up to a random stranger and be like, hey, man, I'm struggling. Can you please pray for me? The Bible says to confess our sins to one another. The Bible says to have the elders of the church pray for you when you are sick. It says to confess our sins so that we can be healed, so that we can be saved. That's the one place that you can do it. Don't neglect that. And don't neglect sharing your spiritual gifts as well. Get involved in the groups. Get involved in community. This will change your life. And again, you guys, in Hebrews chapter 10, it says, Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The closer we get to the return of Jesus, the more you will need biblical community. That's why it says, all the more as the day draws near. You're going to need the church in these end times to stay on track, to stay on course, and to make your aim straight. And another thing that a lot of people say is, but the church has problems. I don't like the people that go to church. They've hurt me. There are some cases where it's very severe uh, 
lack of knowledge or foolishness or religiousness that's going on. And I'm going to be doing a prayer video here next on my channel for people who feel like they can't find a church. We're going to be praying against that, that you do find a church, that you find biblical community. But I want to encourage you, if there are minor problems, if somebody has wronged you in the church, understand that wherever people are, there are going to be problems. And I'm not saying that there are churches that you shouldn't flee from. There are some churches stuck in religiousness. There are some churches whose people um, are not allowing God to work. Their blinders are on, the veil is on, and therefore there is no fruit being produced. You ask God. You ask God, is that happening in my church? You pray for them, but then you find another one. There is going to be a church somewhere where you can grow where you're gonna feel at home, where you're gonna feel accepted. And we just need to make sure that we're going to a church that's speaking the truth and loving at the same time. To, to have one or the other is just as bad. You can't go to a church that is speaking nothing but truth with no love because God is love. But at the same time, you don't wanna be going to a church that's speaking nothing but love and acceptance and forgetting about the truth because they want people to feel comfortable. So they're like neglecting to talk about controversial subjects. You can't have truth without love and you can't have love without truth. They go hand in hand. So yes, the church has problems. Every church is gonna have problems because people are there and people were not perfect. But God doesn't say, and he didn't say, oh, I'm done with the church. I'm done with the church because these people keep sinning. They, they keep messing up. No, he said, Matthew 16, 18 again, and I tell you, Peter, and on this rock, on this bedrock, on this foundation, I will build my church. Jesus said he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That is God. That is Jesus saying this. Don't resort to sitting at home and watching it online, friends. Don't resort to thinking that you can interpret the Bible alone because that's an impossible mission. God never intended for his word to be interpreted by one person. You need biblical community. Remember that the best way to bring people in, if you're like, how do I bring people into my church? What's the best marketing scheme, right? Don't make it a scheme. The best thing that you can do to bring people in is be a bright shining light on the lampstand that penetrates darkness and draws people to Christ. So make your prayer, God, make me a lampstand that is so bright that people see it from all over, that darkness sees it and that they're drawn to it. When it's truly about bringing souls to God, that's when you'll see growth. That's when you'll see people coming because you're that lampstand. So begin to pray for your church. Begin to pray for your ministries, for your, your TikTok pages. If you're preaching about God at all, say, God, increase the lampstand that is my TikTok. God, increase the lampstand that is my church, Zion City. I go to Zion City. Increase the lampstand that I am when I go out into public. We want to do this not only for ourselves and for our salvation's sake, but also because we see Paul. Paul was a traveler throughout his time with God, throughout his ministry. And Ephesus is an important city back in the Bible, a very important city to the Gentiles. Next to Jerusalem, it was probably the most important uh, city to the Gentiles. Now, Paul spent several years in Ephesus. He was known to be in one place and then to go, another place, then go. He traveled a lot and he didn't stay in one place for a long time. But in Ephesus, he actually spent several years. Paul found only 12 believers when he went to Ephesus. Only 12 people believed in God. And this is a city that, if you compare it to modern day, 
is as big as New York or Miami. He transformed a culture. He went and spoke the word of God to people to the point where there was a man by the name of Demetrius. He was an idol maker, so he would actually make like statues of golden things to worship. He was a firm believer in, you know, many other gods, polytheism. People who lived there were in the same boat. They believed in many gods. And he actually said, we have to get rid of this guy, Paul, because he's seen the the change and the transformation that he was bringing to the city. It says so many people began to stop worshiping false gods and were turning to Christianity to the point where this man Demetrius said, we have to get rid of him. We have to get rid of this guy, Paul, I'm losing money. Like I'm not seeing people come into my shop to buy these idols because they're throwing away all of these things that are related to polytheism. polytheism modern day money nearly a million dollars worth of occultic books were burned in repentance of that city so people began to burn their books of witchcraft and all these things because they were turning to god they were burning their idols and this angered demetrius we will see this type of change we can see this type of change don't tell me that it can't happen because it already has if we choose to go to church and we choose to be the body of Christ and show up and show out like Paul did in this city where there was only 12 believers when he got there, we can begin to see strip clubs losing business. We want to be that generation where we see pornography stats going down, not growing. If, if we as the church were to step up, we would see all of these things come to pass. Don't tell me that it can't happen because it happened before and it will happen again in the mighty name of Jesus. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? Begin to be that peace that you are in the body of Christ. It doesn't matter if you're the, the toenail. It doesn't matter if you're the head, if you're the eye, if you're the pinky, it doesn't matter. Go and do your part so that we can see a transformed culture just like we did with Paul in Ephesus. It got to the point where even the leaders were defending Jesus. The city was in turmoil. The city was turning into a riot because this man Demetrius, the idol maker, was finding people to go against Paul and to cause havoc. He wanted Paul to stop and he got people to come along with his agenda. And so a riot began to break out, but the mayor of that town eventually saw that there was mayhem and he himself, the leaders were defending Jesus's preachers. They came out and said, hey, you guys, like this is not necessary. It, it's not a big deal. Let them preach Jesus. And if you read, you'll see why he said that. We can see that. We can see this transformation happen, you guys. To the point where even the leaders, even some leaders will be on our side. So I just hope that this has given you some clarity as to why church is so important. Uh, don't forget that reference of, you know, Jesus says that the church is his bride. And imagine if you were the bride, imagine your husband comes home and tells you, hey, uh, my friend said that they don't really like you, that they love me, but they don't really want to hang out with you, so I'm going to go hang out with them. How would you feel? How would you feel if your husband or your bride was choosing to go in a way or sit with people that you knew didn't like you? Wouldn't it hurt? God is saying, the church is my bride. If you don't like my bride, then we're not hanging out. We're not going to be seen together. We're not going to be chilling together. Because the bride and the groom are one. Church and God go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. And it's time for us to get into the habit, to make time and to make it a priority, to make it a habit. And 
if you feel touched by this video, let me pray over you in my next video so that God can give you a desire to go to church. I know it's hard sometimes, but let's make it a habit. I love you guys. Bye. God bless.